back between two yetis with the one and only Suki. How are you, Suki? Good. How are you? I've long known time you. Soon. I've known you for 12 years, but you've been in the industry for um, a long time. 18 now. now. This is my 18th year. 18th year. Right. Have you always done photography? Because that's all I've ever really known you for. Right. When everybody I met, uses. I met you and your brother, and I love your dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that was almost 10 years ago. More. Um, well, I think it was 2005, 2006, right? Yeah, easily. And that's how I got. I was working for Power Modi Art Magazine as a freelancer. Right. My forte is um, as a photographer, but my real love is video. I'm a videographer, photographer. Okay. But everybody always says, oh, photography. Well, I do both. But my background is, uh, this is my second career, because my first career was I ran the media center at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Right. Science center. So okay. I'm kind of a geek, and I like to push buttons. And so I ran their whole media center. I ran uh -huh. five huge lecture halls with 550 seats, the largest. 16 millimeter film and I hire all the students to work for me while they're there for the four years, but I was the supervisor. Yeah, yeah. So I um, well, set up all the for? cameras. I worked there for 18 years. Wow. And I'm on my 18th year here now. So Jeez. that's, I left after the 18 years and I ran the whole media center. And so on the weekends I was sailing on wooden classic sailboats in Newport. Yeah. So then one of my clients, um, you know, had me do a photo video and he's like, I was on the bow of the boat sailing and my hair blowing and I was like, mm -hmm. I think I just found my new love. And he's like, Suki, you look really great up there in the bow of the sailboat. I remember turning around and going, I think I found my new love because the cheek under my feet and yeah. cheek and I'm like, you know, these are classic sailboats. Yeah, yeah. So he took me to um, St. Martin for the St. Martin um, regatta, the Heineken regatta. Yep. And I met all these other photographers and I was doing video back then. And back then, everybody, it was only on VHS. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I then would make the videos and then sell them to the sailors. And they'd be like, $20? And I'm like, uh, 20 bucks is not that much. I have to mail it to you, transfer it. So I'd go back and I had four weeks paid vacation at Harvard, so I would run off and do those and come yeah. back, transfer all my stuff at the university because I was a supervisor and all that. So that's how I get into the photo video. And then I got the itch and I took two leave of absence in the time I worked at Harvard. In 95, I worked on the cruise ship Marco Polo, yeah. who actually is um, Orion Cruise Line. Jer um, Jerry Harrod, and he owns a mega yacht. I found that out years later yeah. when I came to the yachting industry. <laughs> Small world. And um, I took uh, a year, six months to a year off from Harvard, and I said, look, can you hold my cushy job? I'm going to just take six months, but if I don't like it, I'll come back and stay at Harvard. So I stayed six, and I was like, forget it. Everybody knew my business on board. We were on our way to Antarctica. Things were breaking left and right on the cruise ship. I'm like, we're going to go hit it. And we're going to Antarctica. We'll probably hit an iceberg and I'll be another Titanic. Yeah, yeah. So I got off and I came back and stayed at Harvard another 10 years where I had great respect from professors. It wasn't time to go. The technology was still growing. Yeah. So I worked also on the side for a magazine called New Media. Yeah. And my mentor was a guy named Bob Doyle. And we reviewed all the high technology, the cameras and everything you're using. Yeah. And I was his two girl showing all that while I worked at Harvard. Whilst you were so I went so to, you're I a went big to, geek. I am. I went to NAB. I got to go everywhere to Vegas, all the shows. And I was his girl to work with him. And he would say, Suki, tell me what's up with it. Would you like the color? Do you like where the buttons are? Yeah. And uh, he was colorblind too, so he needed me to like tell him how the projections were looking. Mm. And I ordered all that stuff for Harvard, but he would then write about it for New Media Magazine. And I met him through a professor at Harvard. So uh, my second leave of absence, I stayed another 10 years at Harvard. Then I was still itchy for the sailing thing. And I said, yeah. I want to sail across the South Pacific and I'm all doing these sailing races. So I Googled online and I found a rally of sailboats going to the America's Cup in Millennium 2000. Called the founder in New York and said, "Hey, I, I want to sail on your sail on your sailboats rally. I'll be the media person, and I'll get my sponsors. But you let me sail, and I'll do the whole video and the highlight for yeah. the uh, rally of people going on the sailboat." So I ended up then making the first blog because there was no blogs in '99. Uh, right. So I had a website, and I used all my buddies at Harvard who kept up the website, wrote about me. I had some professors talking about. Because I went from Panama, Ecuador, Ecuador, Galapagos, and then 21 days at sea to the French Polynesian Islands. Yeah. So I had a mini sat sea with me that my sponsors gave me. I had my Sony, my Macintosh, and I wrote, and it was a dollar thirty nine a minute for that, you know, to have the uh, the connection. SIM card. Yeah. And I gave everybody on the crew, and 
they'd be on it for hours, and I'd be like, you know, I'm sending that bill to your mother, so but knock yourself <laughs> out. So I then would upload two or three pictures. So I had a blog, yeah. and it was called Broad Reach, and you could sail with me from the helm of your desktop. Wow. So when I ended up in New Zealand, I couldn't work there anymore, and the syndicate was going on. So I got hired by some of the American syndicates. They're like, she's got her own gear. And I said, yeah, I can go out and do the uh, videos, but I don't. you have your own editors. Let them edit. So I would just go out, do the sailing for the, some of, they had a couple syndicates going at the time until yeah. they broke down. So that's why I made money on the side. And people were like, see, you should go back to America, work on a yacht's crew. And I said, maybe if I was 21 and going backwards in my career. But isn't that funny how it all ties in? Yeah. So I was like, no. And then my client from Newport, Rhode Island, because I sailed on all the wooden classics, he owned yachtstore.com in the charter groups and said, I want you to come back. I'll get you out of New Zealand. You're done with that whole part of your life. Go to Antigua, to the Antigua Charter Show for the mega yachts. I want you to do video walkthroughs on the charter yachts. Yeah. And again, still VHS for yachtstory.com. Yeah. So I started doing the video walkthroughs. So I'm one of the first to do video walkthroughs and so forth. And I met Norma Trees and Greg Mullen, the owner, captain yeah. of Dock Walk. So he said, Suki, I need someone like you to take the photos. They don't want to talk to me. I need someone to be at the docks. Why don't you come to Fort Lauderdale? you know, live with my mom, my wife and I, and then I will pay you to do all the photos for a dock walk. So I came and I was like, okay, this is the creme de la creme. I'm on the big stuff over 100 feet. Yeah. So that's how I got in. And then I actually helped mom, Greg Mullen and Norma, make it to a larger magazine. Yeah. So could my background walk, is, right, yeah. 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 So I'm a producer, editor, director. My music video won MTV in 1986. A music video? Yes, I'm, I'm a groupie of bands, I have to admit. Anyways, uh, what, what, what was my it? boyfriend was a bass player, and he was quite well-known in Boston for a well-known band called The Lines, and then they became The Drive. So they opened for, like, The Cars and Jay Giles, and, you know, I worked at Harvard, so the photographer. So, you know, I thought I wanted to be a sound person, but I realized in a band, the sound guy's the last, first one in, last guy to leave. Yeah. So it's better to be the bass player's girlfriend than be the photographer. And then I made the music Does that make you a groupie? yeah. You could say that. I mean, we're from England. We don't these yeah. terminology in the band you mentioned. We don't really know that well. Yes, but, but so I love reggae, so I'm a big, big groupie of reggae music. So oh, I go cool. to a lot of shows for reggae, and so I ended up doing photo, video interviews for a lot of different yeah. people, not just corporate and just yachting. I still do back in the day some of my music stuff because yeah. I would do Guitar Magazine. They need editorial photos, so instead of taking a photo of a captain, I'm like, oh, I get to go to the studio and do just the photo for Gibson or Les Paul or. Very Cool. Yeah, kind of cool. So that people don't know that whole other life. But so you've done a smattering of everything, yes. including being a Harvard. Yeah, so Harvard's my years. love, man. That's where I learned how to really work in the industry and how to yeah. communicate with people because you're working with the creme de la creme professors. And are you obviously you've got the latest camera? I mean, have you found yeah. it difficult keep keeping up with technology? No, but that's pretty I'm much what you did at Harvard. Flip right away. Yeah. I move all the time. I when I have something new that comes out, I sell it to someone like you or a junior or somebody along the way. I move it on my Macs. I move, move, move. And just get the new, latest and I get greatest. the newest and the greatest and latest. But That's very cool. I'm kind of getting burnt out in it. Now I'm thinking of going, I'm big on trying to get into, um, I want an RV. I want to like get a tripped out like you know Airstream and make it look like a yacht inside so I can just go up and down the coast, stay in the yachting industry, but I created a, um, a website now called Land Yachting. So now I can maybe review not like, you know, the smaller RVs, but like, you know, the creme de la creme RVs that are riding around, the yeah. tour buses. <laughs> so... Anyways, but that's how, and so Doc Walk was like, you know, I was right there at the beginning, and then when they wanted to, Greg wanted to sell it, yeah. I was right here at the Miami Boat Show, and they had sold Doc Walk, I'm sorry, Boat International had sold to um, to the, a new company in London. Yeah. So the French guy that owned it, I knew him for years, so they were like, hey, you know, Tony Harris wants to talk to you, they want to buy Doc Walk, and we had it for sale. So I was like, who the hell is Tony Harris? They're like, he's the new owner of Doc, um, Boat International. And uh, Norma had our, they had folded their um, captain's log or yeah. whatever, and Norma went to um, Yacht Report. And then I sold for Greg. I found Boat International as the buyer for Doc Walk. Wow. Because Triton was coming out at the time. Oh, hang on, so your microphone fell down a little bit. Oh. Yeah, so Triton had just come out at the time also. So wow. we were like, no, no, Doc Walk's not going underwater. So 
That's amazing. So that's how we kept Doc Walk alive, and I now just freelance because, you know, to work for them full time, I'd have to sit in an office, and I've never done that from day one. I'm not starting now. I can tell you're kind of the person that likes to be out and oh, about uh, and doing different I mean, different I stuff. meet the captain, so all the crew know me, so mm. I, like here at the show, I'll do 20 so Doc shots for Doc Walk. Well, they'll tell me what they need, you know, hmm. for the magazine. And I freelance for everybody, Boat International, all the brokers. Yeah. I'm shooting on Usher right now for the ISS um, Association. And Very cool. We have a seminar going on with um, our captain's um, discussion about off the beaten path for destinations. So we'll be doing that on Sunday, and I'll be filming that. Very cool. You, yeah, so, so you're constantly busy then? Yeah, I keep busy, you know, but when you work for yourself, it's you make the jobs come for you. And yeah. And one of my old uh, Harvard University, when I worked there, I worked uh, with Alan Dershowitz, the law firm, and, you know, the professor. Mm -hmm. And he was a professor at Harvard and uh, a lawyer. So his friend called me and said, here, he has a new technology of court reporting. And I said, no, I can't do the court reporting. He goes, no, no, I need you because you're the audiovisual sound man. And I put out expensive wireless microphones at the depositions in hearings. So I need someone that can troubleshoot that and you'd be perfect. You don't have to type anything. You just time stamp it. So he said, she said, I'm like a game show host. Yeah. So I got the lawyer sometimes fighting. Don't, you know, stop, stop, you know, um, harassing my witness. And I just record it. And then they might say, court reporter, can you play that back? And I'm like, I don't know what you just said. I just hit the last time stamp. And he's like, is that me? And I'm like, well, that's your voice, counsel. So yes, that is you. <laughs> Wow. So it's a new technology, so it's not the girl this. So I get to go to the courthouses now and do hearings with the judges. And I carry a big microphone, you know, the big Yeti microphone? Yeah. So they're like, well, the, you know, the, he, the judge is like, what is that? And I'm like, oh, aren't you on American Idol? They told me to come here to, I thought you were auditioning. <laughs> they're like, you're in the courthouse. I'm like, oh, sorry. So it's fun. So I get to do a little bit of everything. Well, what's the craziest case you've heard of so far? Oh, goodness. Always the, um, you know, the gold digger trying to get the money right. from the lover or whatever. And one time it was the, 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 the gentleman had died, so the mother was there trying to get her money back from her son's estate that the gold digger took. You just have to read the beginning, and when they start giving the cross questions, you're like going, ooh. 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 And then she's sitting there, and then she's allowed to be present, but then they're doing her deposition. Mm. You can put it all together. You're like, ooh, that's juicy. <laughs> It's, it's quite good. For, I mean, I've been to court once for a traffic violation. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it was the most fun morning I've had in a yeah. long time. The judge, was like, he came Funny, up. Funny, right? He came out and he liked having a joke and he was like, okay, so this is how this works. If you're guilty, da, da, da. Yeah. Let's say, for instance, you've gone to Walmart and you've stolen something and you plead guilty. We'll do it now. If you plead no contest, I'll make it easier. If you say no, we'll go to trial. So, this is how it works. First case. Okay, you got theft. Walmart! Okay, all right, here we go. They've got cameras. I mean, obviously, it was the most hilarious. I wish it had been recorded. Oh, yeah, he was, recorded. He had it down. The next person came. Okay, Walmart! This is going to be my day all day today. Exactly. Let, let me give you a piece of advice. You ain't going to win, so come on. Yeah. It was it was there, like a reality show. It is like a reality, and so I get to go to the Broward Courthouse. It's just brand new. They just built it. So my clients just, I don't even meet them. I just, they just send me an email, Sue, can you carry the, cover this hearing? I'm like, don't give me the ones at eight or nine in the morning. I'll take yeah. the 10 o'clock on. So, Are you so, gonna see if you can get the shooters one? Do what's that? The shooter who just happened in Parkland. Are you gonna be able to get that, do you think? No, no, it all depends. My client is court scribe, so they right. hire me just to do depots and whatever, but I have to do the hearing, so. But you know, you get to know the bailiff. So the judge, you know, you all stand when they come in and everybody's in, the cases move quick. So I just sit there and of course, you know, the judge is like, Hello, Suki, what should I sing today? Because he sees yeah, the yeah. mic. So you get to know them one on one. Yeah. So, you know, you're just there and then they move along. And so it's quick, good money for me just on the side. So it's yeah. just another job, you know. But I love the yachting industry. Yeah. I've been doing it for so long. And, you know, I call Norma, like Auntie Norma, because she's like my yeah. idol. And so, um, and she does a lot of stuff with me and Yachting Today. So, and I'm kind of creating more of like an online TV show where oh. I'll kind of launch Yachting Today and build it into it and have you guys on as like a segment. Love it, love it. Between two Yeti, so it will always be a segment in that. You are very bedazzled today. Is it just, Thank uh, you. It's very nice. We have a sponsor on board, Usher, called Kumi Jewelry. Right. And these are all his pieces, so I'm just wearing it and appetizing it for him. So, 
It's turquoise with beautiful... Is he watching out the window like where she's going with my stuff? Um, <laughs> I just have to bring it back by five because it's so expensive. And I said, you need to insure me, man, because if someone tries to steal my camera, let alone the jewelry, we're in trouble. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that's a year's wages right there. But the other person you should interview is Julie Perry. I'm sure you guys heard in 2008 I was in a uh, pedicab accident. We're no, very I, lucky to be alive. I do remember seeing something on Facebook yeah. about that. And, it was uh, on New Year's Eve in 2008. And truly, I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now what was it? You were in the pedicab and you were we coming over the bridge, to, right? We were on the Los Olos Bridge. Yeah. I had just come out of a over. invited party for Penske at the Elbow Room, the famous Elbow Room. Yeah. And I was with Julie Perry, who is a well-known, um, you know, uh, guru and wrote and uh, authored a book called The Insider's Guide to Becoming a Chief Stew. So all stews read it. So I'd met her and was very impressed by what she did. So, um, she and I were just there as an invite, but when we left it at like, you know, 1231, we were just going over the Los Souls Bridge, but we were just walking, and the pedicab guy came up. Hey, girls, I'm going to give you a ride. I'm just going over. So he pedaled, and Julie and I were in the back, and when we got to the top of the bridge, we got hit from behind by a hit-and-run drunk driver because, obviously, to this day, they never Definitely found him. Definitely microphone coming out of you. Oh, sorry. So they never found who it was to this they day. They never found him? No. And I tried to sue the city of Fort Lauderdale, and they said, go away. when you're," Because they cop out at 100000 and say, you know, you know, uh, we're not going to take your case. I had every lawyer. I had to go to Miami, take a lawyer. Nobody would take our case. Trust me, I had it yeah. covered. And uh, Julie and I used social media because Julie's a well-known uh, expert in the social media world. And uh, the industry right away found all about it. You know, I we, we're very lucky. The Lord, you know, we could have gone off the pedicab into the Los Olos, you know, over the bridge into the. So into it wasn't Coastal. the pedicab's fault. It was someone behind. So, no, to this day we don't know who hit and run us. I got. I broke this little bone in my knee and they put a plate in and I had a hairline fracture. So I had to stay in a wheelchair for two months, but Julie Perry got it worse. She hit her head, so she got a little palsy inside of her face. So, you know, but we were, during the time Julie wrote the Insider's Guide, she created a whole thing called YouTube um, Secret Weapon yeah. on how you use social media and YouTube. She knows her stuff. Since she's there, you guys should interview her. Yeah. And then um, I was in, um, people were like, I heard you were on a helicopter. And I said, well, it's wheelchair accessible. So I <laughs> had my friend wheel me up to the top of the uh, landing and I just got up. Because I just had to stay in the wheelchair. Yeah. And they said two months. And when I was coming up on the Fort Lauder the Miami boat show, I was like, well, aren't you going to put me on crutches or something? He goes, no, I said two months. You can just, everything's handicap accessible. Just ride around in your wheelchair at the boat show. And Norma was wheeling me around here at the boat show. <laughs> Power and Modi, I had their magazine yeah, parties yeah. there. It was in the Eden Rock. I remember that one, actually. Yes, that was And I remember, like, her taking me up. They put me up, and they took me up on the elevator, but I couldn't get out of the wheelchair. So, um, but, wow. you know, you got to just, you know, heal lightly. But we're very lucky to be alive. And, again, it's 10 years our anniversary right now for me and Julie. Jesus, 10 We're lucky. Years. Wow. Yeah. Too bad they never found out, because I'd probably be very wealthy, right? Because yeah. I would have some money from... And no camera nowhere. Believe me. They had a camera on the bridge, but looking looking um, south, but not looking north. And the girl, the bridge tender, said she was just about to open the bridge and saw us. I said, how can you not have a camera looking at the bridge? And then down at the bottom of, uh, you know, quarter deck and all that, there were no cameras there. Less than a year later, now they're there. How fast so, do you think he hit you? Was he speeding? Was he well, drunk? Well, he, he, nobody, because they immediately go to every um, repair place and see if who was hurt that night. No records of anything. I, it had to be somebody that knew somebody. Because yeah. how could they get away with that? Come on, man. It was in 2008. It's not that far but long ago that technology... So he, but they were no cameras. Yeah. And so, you know, when I woke up in the Broward Hospital, there were so many, like, you know, uh, lawyers saying, hey, can we take your case? And I'm, I'm like, not even out of the hospital yet, and they're already vulturing on you. But, uh, Wheelchair chasing. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. ambulance chasing. Ambulance chasing is yeah. what they call them. So, um, well, yeah. Suki, so you happens. are a fascinating person. Thank you. And I love what you guys are doing to, to, to Yetis. Let's, I like it. Should we get a little bit into politics, or should we stay away? What kind of politics do you want? Do you like Trump or not? Oh, Trump. I find him quite interesting. He's interesting. He's very interesting. Do you, I, do you like him and agree with I him? I like some things he's doing. So, I mean, I'm kind of on the cusp of both ways. I mean, I like, I mean, I was born from New England, being from New England, hanging out with the Kennedys, you know? Right. My parents were like, you are a Democrat. But I kind of now swing both ways. So right now, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> I just hope for the best for our country and everything Absolutely. turns out in the end, you know? Yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, Suki, thank you very much thank for your you. time. Thank you. And we'll see you around. And Excellent. Get some shots. Thanks for the beer. No no Not a problem. Not a problem.
So Suki, if you've been doing this for 18 years, what's the funniest or most embarrassing thing you've ever seen at a boat show? Oh my God, I have seen it all. And you know, when you're on these yachts, you know, on the back of the aft deck or, you know, let alone what I know from all the crew from Dock Walk and all so forth, I hear everything, the gossip. This one was with that one, the captain. It's, we hear the below deck stuff. Nice. You know what I mean? But we don't talk about that anymore. But the most embarrassing thing, was me, man. <laughs> and I made, I just started working for Dock Walk in 2001, and I'm at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, and Norma, and we're doing all this stuff, and Greg's like, you know, we had a captain's hideout. We created the captain's hideout. Yeah. So we had um, that at the Behema, and Greg says, Suki, make sure, you know, we get a photo, or who we're giving, um, we're giving the Vespa to. I said, okay, just let me know who we pull out of the fishbowl for the captains and the crew, which yacht's gonna win it. He goes, okay, just, you know, we got to do that. And I said, okay, Greg, just tell me when. He goes, so we just want to make sure the right yacht gets it. And I'm like, what? He goes, look at the list. What do you think? I go, oh, oh Greg, all right. And I go, where is the Vesper? He goes, right there by the Moran booth at the Swimming Hall of Fame. I go, okay. I go, oh, Invetable, that would be perfect. They have the lapels. They look good. You know, Captain um, Captain Rusty, you know, um, had the big mustache handlebar. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, that would be the perfect boat. So, and I go in, it's right there. They can wheel it down and get the picture. He goes, all right, just let them know that, you know, we'll come take the picture. So here, and it just happens the yacht's name is Invetable. So here's what happens when you do the naughty and set something up. And so I go to the yacht and I see the captain, not the captain, he wasn't there, the crew. And I'm walking by and I say, three o'clock, photo go, crew. And he goes, the mate's up on the, you know, the third deck. So he's like, Suki, come here. And they have a black carpet right in front of uh, Moran Group there. I said, I've got to go. And I'm walking down to meet Norma to do a photo for her, her book signing. Right. For you know, one of the other captains that were doing a book signing. So I'm like going, i got to go. And he's like, just come for a minute and try to talk. So I'm walking towards the back of the aft of the boat. And there's Stern 2 right here. Black carpet, navy blue hull. I'm looking up. And I'm like, got my, back then I had my cell phone, my pack my camera with my big video camera, am I still? And I come a little closer, and come on, man, I know how to walk around on boats, yeah. right? I wasn't trying to get in between the thing. I just took one step too many. I went between the boat, I was in the drink. I thought, are you <laughs> kidding me? I had the bag, I'm hanging off the side with my arm like this. And the, the mate's up there, and he's like, oh. And I'm like, you better get his ass down here. So I had to wait, my clog was falling off, I was trying to catch it in my foot. But I'm hanging like this, and he comes, he's like, oh, are you all right? And I'm like, take the bag off my shoulder, the bag, get it off so I could get up and being an athlete swimmer, I jump right up on the dock and I'm emptying it out and people walking by and like fish are coming out of my bag and everything. And I'm like, to the maid, I'm like, quick, get me the freshest bucket of water so I can put it. And he's over there with the spigot. and I'm like, turn on the water. So he fills the thing and I'm like, bring it. And I threw everything in, took all my chips out, saved all my photos, put all the cameras, video camera, everything, still camera. In the water? Oh, fresh water, yeah. Working at Harvard, you learn how to take care of things in salt water. You put it in fresh water. Just soak it right away. Right. And then my camera guy um, was in North Miami, so I called him. And So anyway, but people were walking by, and I see the captain. He's like, what's up? And I go, I fell in the drink. I had my Tommy Bellfingers on. They took my clothing, the engineers in the engine room, taking my cell phone, we're clearing it. And I'm like, he, I put everything in the water. He said, they changed me into the crew uniform. I walk down to the next dock to go do the photo with Norma. They're like, what are you doing in a crew uniform? I'm like, don't ask, just give me your damn point, your point and shoot camera. And so then <laughs> the crew are walking and I said, take my bucket of water to the um, captain side and do not tell Tim from Globe Marine Travel, they're all up there, right? And Greg, I go, don't tell him what happened, just bring the bucket, put it there, I will get it and then take it to my repair. So they call me when at the yacht, they're like, Suki, and I look over and they're like, the crew, we're taking the bucket to the captain's side. I go, I know, shh, just go. <laughs> well, it went like fire through the whole boat show. Suki from Dock Walk fell in the water, right? It was so embarrassing. <laughs> so I then get, after I go to the captain's side, I'll, I come in, they're all like, splish, splash, she was taking a bath. I'm like, you guys suck. So I in, then got in my car and drove to North Miami. It's the last day of the boat show. So. You know, I'm itchy. I'm like, oh, am I so itchy because of all the oil and everything in the water? <laughs> so I went to him. I called my guy. Hey, it's Suki. I'm bringing my camera. I did a total blonde thing. I walked off the dock at the Fort Lauderdale boat show. He goes, yeah, that was dumb. He goes, leave it in the fresh water and bring it to me right so now. So you're leaving it in the water the yeah, whole time? Yeah, he told me not to take it out. 
And then what? when I got there, he, he said, toss the video camera. I go, yeah, I know that. And I just ordered the brand new one the day before, so I'd made his money off that one. So, but the Canon camera, he, two days later, he calls me all set, ready to go, fixed it. And then, of course, I sold it to you, a captain or somebody. Else. But your power's already off then, so did you take the battery out as yeah, well? Yeah, I took then? everything right the, out. The, all you have to do is take chip. out batteries, chips, anything, chattery, everything, all batteries, and boom, put every, the camera and the unit, everything in. The video and, and camera leave was it in gone, the water. Because it was, um, you know, mini DV. Yeah. That was just gone. leave it in the water. Leave it. He told me not to take it out. I said, I change it before I come. He goes, no. And then he left it in water overnight, and then he um, took dried it out, it. put it on, dried it, fixed it, and then I sold it off to somebody else. But uh, no, but it was working. It was fine and working. It happens. Suki. So embarrassment. That was awesome. Thank you, Suki. <laughs> yeah. How embarrassing, huh?